Hey, Braden, longtime listeners would know that you are obsessed with coffee. Yes, I am. Anyone who sees me in the morning knows that I will always have my cup of coffee with me. Mm -hmm. You know, today we're going to learn about three of Paul's obsessions, and it's not really at the same level as your No, coffee. I love coffee way more than anything <laughs> Paul loved. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Welcome to the Bible Story Podcast. We are here in our studio and slowly making changes. That's right. My name is John. My friend over there is Brayden. And Brayden, you're planning a youth retreat here in November, right? Yeah, we are. So uh, November 11th. <clears throat> yeah, we are. So uh, yeah, we are. So November 11th to 13th, we are having a youth retreat for anyone in grade 9 to 12. Perfect. Uh, and so, like, what what are they going to get out of this youth retreat? Oh, okay. It's going to be awesome. So, we have uh, worship people signed up that are going to come and play awesome music for us. There's going to be time together. There's going to be lots of fun, like a little bit competitive games. We might have a point system. <laughs> might have a theme. Might? Might. Okay. So, all right. So, those are the... That's kind of the what they're, they're going to do. Yeah. But, like... Why do you want to see them there? Like, oh. what is your hope for them? Okay, so if you came to summer camp and had a really great experience, this is your time to come back, see friends that you connected with, but also bring friends from school. Bring a sibling if you're in those grades or bring someone from down the block. Uh, we get connected again as a big group and we just really get to build relationships and touch base and get excited for all the things that God is doing in our lives. That's really cool. Okay, I got to say, Brayden, you yep. look low. You look I'm not short. No, oh, short. Not, yeah, short. You've never, you're not normally like height challenged, we'll say. This um, is true. But, uh, you know, today you're a little, little bit, you know, on the short side. Okay. Uh, apologies to anybody who's not watching YouTube yes. because you can't see this, but it's true. Um, Brayden okay, so, is shorter today. As I, as yeah, I am. Yeah, so are you. So we, as we said, are doing some changes and one of these changes is going to happen this week. So tune in if you're watching this episode to next episode, there's going to be something different. Something's different. But we are going to ask you your opinion, like we said last week. And so stay tuned. Find us on Instagram at Bible Story Pod, and we will have that survey or would you rather in some ways yeah. um, to help us decide. The change this week is that our chairs are currently different and we are slightly shorter. And way more comfortable. I am way more comfortable. Those stools were not a good choice. No. No, <laughs> we're learning as we go. Yeah, you got you have a lot of fun designing things. Uh, Thank you. And you know, I I appreciate it. this set is going to be no exception. Yes, it's going to be great once we get the fireworks and the bedazzler <laughs> and the disco ball. Well, I could do all those things. <laughs> yeah. I think actually we should like design this whole set to be like this hockey locker room theme. Like I love hockey. That's yep. you know. I think a lot of other people do. I think it would be a big hit. Okay. One, everyone would assume that we know things about sports. <laughs> I, well, I do. I don't. And oh. two, that's kind of the grossest place I could imagine. Like a Yeah, it is pretty <laughs> stinky now that you think of it. <laughs> like, I don't want to record there. <laughs> no. 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 Okay. Hockey locker room without the smell? No. Oh. And we're going to have something much better, so stay tuned. And, this and is why he's the designer and yeah. I'm along for the ride. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Great. <laughs> All right. Okay. So... Now that we have the, the set and everything uh, talked about, um, it's really good to be back here and to be on screen. We get to say that now. It's weird. It's like, weird. Every time you mess up saying viewers instead of listeners, yeah. now it's genuine. Now it's true. Okay. So jumping back into it, last week, we launched our new series. We launched a new season. We launched the YouTubes. <laughs> Big things. Yes. I, we didn't launch YouTubes. That's been around for a long time. Yeah, if we had launched YouTubes, that would be a completely different career. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we dove right into actually a thank you letter that the disciple Paul wrote. Yeah, and the so Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul uh, wrote, and that is in the book of Philippians, which we started reading last week as well. Yeah. And so Paul wrote it while on house arrest in Rome. Yeah. And it's somewhat strange, I have to say, because Paul is just so joyful in this in this letter. Um, it's a little bit crazy to think, and you almost forget that he's in house arrest when you're reading this because he's just so joyful. Now, I'm yeah. not sure 
uh, I could write with such a tone, uh, with such joy yeah. if I was to be locked up. No, I mean, imagine we all had a, st- not house arrest. I mean, I wouldn't go we that far. We had a stint of being in our houses being for a while. Being asked to stay in our houses and people were not happy. I could mm-hmm. only imagine they would not be writing joyful letters. It was no. tough. Like there was a lot of hard parts about it. Uh, you and just- everyone was collectively going, like imagine you being the one who had to stay in and all your friends doing fun things. Yeah. You just had to read social media and it was not a social joyful <laughs> it was not a moment. Group. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Paul, he always, I mean, he had such a way of putting enthusiasm and he really described in this letter to the Philippians what was bringing him that joy and that passion. It was yeah. really cool. So today's scripture is found in 1 John uh, verses, uh, pardon me, not 1 John. Today's, let me back up here and get the, like, the proper book of the Bible. Yeah, like would you get it right, please? Yeah, really. <laughs> this book, the text for today, is found in Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 to 30. And it'd be a good idea, I think, for if you haven't read this passage recently to, to pause and yeah. do that, and so you can kind of know what we're, where we're going with things. Yeah, so we're not going to read it out loud like we do sometimes. Yes. So if you need to read it, now would be the time. Uh, we, as we read through it, um, kind of picked up on three very specific obsessions, if you will, of Paul's, like things that he was, an obsession you'd almost describe as something that, like a driving force, mm. Yeah. right? Like the core motivation behind who Paul is and what he does. Yeah. And I think you could maybe ask yourself as you're he- listening to these obsessions of Paul's, like, mm-hmm. what's your obsession? Yeah, and and contrast that with you, uh, with his, with yours, and see what you can learn. Okay, so the first obsession is this: we learn that Paul gets excited when people share the message about Jesus Christ with others. Yeah, he does a lot. He's yeah. really excited about it. Um, I imagine him to be a little bit like you, Braden. Oh, uh, a little over the top with enthusiasm, and you know, a bit of a pep rally at times. <laughs> Thank uh, you. That's yeah. very kind. Uh, yeah. I am honored to be even put in the same room as Paul there in terms go. of ideas. Uh, I, I have no idea what you're talking about, though. I very rarely get excited, and I'm no fun at all, and I don't like fun things. You, he is a walking musical, uh, <laughs> and, and I just have to like say a line of a song, and all of a sudden, he's off in his own world singing something. It's true. It's not my, it's not my fault. It's just <laughs> who I am, who God made me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, I, I do get really fired up actually about people sharing the gospel and and uh we're gonna read a little bit actually where paul is getting that yeah. motivation from so i'm gonna read a little bit of philippians here it is philippians chapter 1 verses 13 to 14 and it goes like this for everyone here including the whole palace guard knows that i am in chains because of christ And because of my imprisonment, most of the believers have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. I'm talking about a a positive thinker. Like he is... Yeah. Silver lining. (laughs) Yeah. Remember, he's in house arrest. He's in prison. And it's not house arrest like Martha Stewart style. No. This is... Not a great house, probably. Nah. He's he's likely chained up. He references that. Yeah. Um, It's more like prison. Like it's just... He's got... it's, it's, it's It's a private dwelling with a guard constantly on him yeah. or around him and and likely he is chained up yeah. so he can't run very fast. Yeah. Not that so, he could anyway because he's kind of an old man at this point. Yeah. He is though a very positive thinker and I think that that comes out in his deepest passions in life. It really comes out based on what is pushing him forward and and what he wants most in all of life is to just have people hear the message of God. And you could see that within it like earlier on in his life, Paul's, Paul himself risked his life mm-hmm. so people could hear the message of, of Jesus. You know, he was beaten. Mm-hmm. He was in prison several times. Uh, he was shipwrecked. Yeah. Um, walked, he must have walked thousands and thousands of miles on his yeah. various missionary journeys. And also people could hear God's message. Yeah. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that Paul's deepest desire is for everyone to to not just hear the God, God's message, but to respond right. in, a, in a... To know God. To know God. Yeah. 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 To respond well. Uh, honestly, I think, like, I pray that for all of us, that mm. our desire, John, you and I, and, and everyone watching and the, you know, campers that come to camp 
that their deepest desire would follow and match Paul's. Mm. That we would have that desire that anybody and everybody would be able to hear and respond to God's message. Okay. So obsession number two. Gotcha. Um, Paul kind of has this really strange argument with himself. I don't know if you've ever had an argument with yourself. No, um, I'm always right. <laughs> So the other you is wrong from time to time? Mm, <laughs> All right. So Paul's had this argument with himself and he's, he's got these two ideas going back and forth. Is it better if he dies and mm. he's able to be with God in heaven or lives and continues the work, which would be better for those he is serving? Yeah, better for like the greater good. Yeah. And it, it kind of, you know, as you first read it, it kind of sounds like Paul might be getting tired, like worn out. Uh, you know, perhaps he's like starting to feel his age. And I think we can apply the word like grueling to, to much of what he's gone through. Yeah. Like walking and speaking and being imprisoned and constantly kind of like trudging forward to continue to teach people about God. And and you're right, he's not a spring chicken either. Right. Right? Like this is kind of towards the end of his ministry and and, and Who life. Who is a spring chicken? <laughs> I don't even I well, I like the chicken's babies? I don't know. Fresh? Fresh? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, he's not young and spry. No. Yeah. And so I can see why someone might um come to this to this explanation for Paul's reflection here that yeah, he's just coming to the end of his life. Like kind of throwing in the towel almost. Yeah, like yeah. he's just he's just tired and done. Yeah. And I don't get that out of this passage. If, in fact, if you go, if you read the entire book or you read some of the other uh, letters that Paul wrote to churches, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to see that I think what he's referencing here isn't his worn out stage in life, but, um, but his deep love for God. Hmm that he is just so in love with him that his fear of death has just kind of fell away. Mm -hmm. And he is, his relationship with Jesus is first and foremost and has grown so much over the years right. that he is, he's got no fear and he's just got this real deep excitement, excitement <laughs> and anticipation, kind of like campers wanting to come to camp only right. more. Right. For An heaven. exponential amount. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, I really like Paul for that reason. There was a there was a moment in time a few years ago where I really read through the letters of Paul and just like, I mean, admire him greatly. Um, I think I, like to be like Paul is something I strive towards. Obviously to be like Jesus and God, but this, the way he earnestly seeks his relationship with God, like for instance, death terrifies me. Yeah. It is. It's a, not, it's, it's not going to be one thing that you look forward to. No, it's a, it is a really scary thought. But the more, you know, I have obviously more growing to do and more understanding of that um, idea. And I want to grow into someone that loves God so much and feels so safe and called home by God, called to heaven, that it is nothing but joy in that experience that there's yeah, no fear excitement anticipation yeah, yeah. <sighs> like that yeah you know I, I think i've heard people describe it as that longing as if you belong somewhere you've never been mm. i like that so i think that's a really good prayer for us mm. like mm -hmm. um it could you, we could pray something like lord may our love for you grow greater and greater and and even greater than our fear of right. death or anything else that we might have. right because those fears hold us back in so yeah. many ways. Yeah. So the third obsession of Paul's uh, is this. So despite all the hardships and the difficulties and, you know, all of the mess mm. that we go through as people, um, that we would live as though we are citizens of heaven, meaning that we are already there, that yeah. that is where we belong. Yeah. You know, I think, I think Christians, well, I don't think. It's a fact that Christians <laughs> in Rome and Philippi, yeah, like they were, they were experiencing persecution. We talked a little bit about that last right. week, like acts of violence, hatred towards them because of their faith in Jesus. Yeah, danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they were being hurt. Mm -hmm. So what Paul is calling them to is not easy, right? Right. Like what he's saying, what he wants for them to live, uh, 
openly and and transformed lives mm. for Christ is is really hard yeah. in that in that time. And, and again, I, th- kind of, I think it would have touched a nerve. Yeah, kind of asking them to say like, "Hey, I know you're afraid, but like, just stop it." <laughs> Right. Like, hard, like be, be, almost sounds harsh. Be courageous in the midst of it. Yeah. But he has such a joyful tone in yeah. the midst of all yeah. of it that it's like, oh, I'm inspired. And, and he himself is doing it. Like, yeah. he's, he, is, he is showing it yeah. in how he is living his life. Um, I think it would be much easier for people, um, for anyone dealing with persecution, just to hide their faith. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, especially if, if that direct community was the one persecuting you. Yeah. Like, keep it under wraps and be like, oh, I'll do this behind closed doors. And then when I go out to where, see the people, I can do it differently. Where it's safe. Where it's safe. Yeah. Yeah. So Paul's calling them to be bold in the midst of persecution. Yeah. Uh, he, essentially, everyone should know that you belong to God, right? not to this world. Hmm. You are a citizen of heaven. Okay. So I have no context to relate to this type of persecution, you know, uh, there has been challenging parts of being a Christian in my life and there's been not so challenging parts. Certainly, I don't think that I've ever been hurt or put in like bodily danger right. as they would have. No one's threatened my life hmm. um, because of my relationship with Christ. So it's sometimes hard to relate to, I think. Yeah, I, and I, it's a fair point. It's a fair point, but I think we we have to remember and be careful that... Our situation is unique, hmm. and we can't downplay the difficulty that we face day to day. Right. And I think the second thing is that it's not Paul's main point. The Philippians and the Romans, their, their persecution wasn't his main point. Hmm. He, he wants Christians yep. to live as citizens of heaven. That's his hmm. main point. So, re- regardless of the depth or danger of persecution or, or trials and difficulties yeah. that you have or lack thereof or lack thereof your life should be lived as though you were a citizen of yeah heaven. The con- that's the point the context of where yeah. where you live and what's happening is secondary right and and all of that really rolled up into this idea of just like paul our obsession should be christ hmm. learning more from him reading his teachings living life as he did okay so let's review. We've okay. got three obsessions that we've we have for Paul here. Yep. And we're kind of contrasting those with what our life is about. Um yeah. the first is to see is for him, first obsession of Paul's is for him to see others sharing the good news about Jesus. Mm-hmm. Second is he loves God more than anything and wants to be in heaven with God. And then the third thing, he wants people to live transformed lives regardless of their circumstances or difficulties. So the people around us should see that we belong to God, Mm. not the world. We're citizens of heaven. Okay. That is three lofty goals. Yeah, I've heard... That's a lot. I've I've heard like read books written on just one of these things. Yeah. I mean, people go through their whole lives struggling with one or all of these Mm -hmm. things. It's... I mean, to be fair, it's not necessarily a point that we get to and think, great, we're here. Yeah. And that's with lots of this stuff. It's like, a, it is a growing opportunity. We're going to discuss more of this in the discussion episode. Great. Sounds good. Hey. Growth tip time. Growth tip time. No elevator music. I like that. No elevator music. No dad jokes. Uh, just our familiar jingle uh, and a growth tip. And as always, a growth tip is a way for all of us to grow in a relationship with Jesus Christ. So today we need a pen. Yes. We need a piece of paper. Yes. And we're going to make uh, our help ourselves with a little bit of reflection on that. Yeah. So grab your piece of paper, grab your pen. And what you're going to do is just right down the middle, draw a line. Right down the middle. Okay. And then you're going to have headers on each side. One header should read citizen of heaven mm-hmm. and on the other side citizen of the world we want you to reflect on on all of the parts of your life where you interact and live mm-hmm. amongst people so that's your school that's your work that's your jobs that's your clubs your home life your home life your family life your neighborhood your church your church bus mhm all of those things places where you go for walks yeah 
Yeah, things you do with people, things you do without people. And even online. Yeah, online's a great one too. Yep, the, yep I agree. So, so under each heading, write down whether, you, whether people see, may see you as belonging to God or to the world. Take five, 10 minutes to do this. And remember, it's your opinion. You don't need to ask every single person in your life, hey, do you think I live uh, as part of the world or part of God? Hmm. Um, so just, you know, what, what comes to the top of your mind and then write those down and it'll be helpful. So just to reiterate, I'm asking you this question. Yes. So we have uh, heaven on top and citizen on the bottom or whichever. Yeah. So or down, world, sorry. Citizen of heaven, citizen of the world. Down the line. Okay. Citizen of heaven, yeah. citizen of the world. Okay. So and then we take these left things and, right. and I say at work, I think people see me as a citizen of heaven. Yeah. So put work on one side or the right. other, school on one side or the right. other. But, and it can just right. be generic. And if it's maybe both sides, then maybe put work on both sides right. or whatever it might be. So, so like, for instance, I'm really good at telling my friends about Christ. Mm. So I, I, and maybe that's my youth group. I, sure. We kind of help each other out. So that could go, I think we're living as citizens of heaven there. Right. But maybe at my, with my hockey team, if I'm yeah. playing hockey, I might be struggling to um, let people know that, mm. hey, I'm, I'm a follower of Christ. Right. And, and maybe I'm living more as a citizen of this world. Yeah. So I think a good way to distinguish it is if you feel fear about sharing your faith in yeah. those groups. Yep. That's great. Um, I, I really like this. We are going to use this uh, piece of paper and kind of activity in our discussion episode. So make sure that you stay tuned for that. Awesome. Say, so it's been really, really enjoyable to be with you guys this mm -hmm. week. Uh, thanks for sharing, uh, listening. Um, it's going to be really important for you to join us in the discussion episode this, this week, I think, because I think we're going to go uh, allow some of the stuff that we've learned today to go a little bit deeper. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be coming right away. Yeah. Uh, I hope you've been challenged and I hope you've been encouraged. We love you guys. Yeah. And don't forget to join us on Instagram at Bible Story Pod and subscribe to the podcast and our YouTube channel wherever you listen to podcasts and on YouTube. That's right. <laughs> you guys take care. This is the discussion for the episode, What is Your Obsession? So today we learned what three of Paul's obsessions are. Seeing people share the good news, desiring to be with God, and seeing others live as citizens of heaven. Yeah, we also asked you to do a little bit of an exercise and make a list of, you know, places where you feel like you're living as a citizen of heaven or where you're living as a citizen of this world. So if you haven't made that list, time out. Yes. And, and do that because we're going to talk about it. That's so, important. It's important. So follow along, um, grab your piece of paper and let's get into it. All right, Braden, would you describe the difference for us between being a citizen of heaven and a citizen of this world? Yes, I will. Right off the top of my head. <laughs> Not scripted at all. <laughs> we do have a script. Just jokes. Because... funny though. Yeah, you are. Our funny. jokes aren't scripted for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I, I will describe the difference there. I think that it's this idea of who we belong to. Yeah. Uh, so, for instance, if a child is lost in a mall, per se, or without their parents, and a stranger comes up to them and is kind and, and says that they will help them, as soon as that child walks towards their parents or sees their parents afar, they will run toward their parent. They'll I've been that child. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you've also been that parent. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on both sides. There are stories of me getting lost for sure. But even if the stranger was kind and, and gracious and loving, the child will immediately run toward their parent. That's, mm. that's kind of our nature. Yeah. And I think, I think we all have a sense of being lost as a child uh, from time to time. Yeah. It's a common experience. Yeah. So maybe, maybe our actions, feelings, or thoughts lead us there at times. Mm -hmm. But we often hear people describe their first significant interaction with Jesus as like a coming home hmm. to a loving parent. And for many that, you know, they, they really are confused by that because they haven't had maybe great parents. But, yeah. um, but for many, that's how they would describe it. Or almost didn't know that they were lost. Yeah. 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 Until they've, they've, they've found 
a place to belong and, a, yeah. and someone who loves them. Hmm. So this feeling of being no longer lost, mm-hmm. but with someone who loves them unconditionally is, is such a powerful uh, experience for many. Yeah. And, and I mean, I got to say like, sadly, not the most common experience for people. Sometimes that's, that's hard to find, right? In this world. In this world. Yeah. 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 That relationship with Jesus yeah. like that. Um, I also, I, I, there's this idea or thought or feeling of, of kind of that longing. We described mm. that earlier in the episode of when you want to be somewhere that you are currently not, right? So uh, think of the last time you traveled somewhere or, you know, had a sleepover at a really good friend's house. And even if you're having like, an awesome time you're in mexico or you're at your best friend's house there's often a longing for home for a familiar place to sleep in your own bed Mm -hmm. it's always my favorite thing yes (laughs) um and even though we haven't been to heaven we are created and designed to belong there and so this leads and grows and fosters that desire in our life to be in heaven just as we kind of read Paul talk about. Yeah. You know, I, I remember as a kid doing a test hmm. and I was like, I have a longing to be anywhere else but here right now. <laughs> yeah. Maybe study all that great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was exactly. not prepared. But that's a different feeling. Different feeling. Yeah. yeah. But I but I've been on trips that I've really enjoyed. And then it's you get home and you kind of walk through the door and you think, ah, like, this is where I want to be right yeah. now. Yeah. Excited to go, excited to come back. There is some questions that we have. Yes. So here's the first one. So using the list that you have just made, uh, look at the areas in your life where you live more as a citizen of the world. Hmm. What needs to change? Now, don't be afraid to get really detailed in your conversation here um, and be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Hit pause and discuss. Question number two. So using this list and looking at the areas of your life where you live more as a citizen of heaven, what are the factors, the people, the circumstances that help you do that? And could any of these things transfer to the areas of your life where you live more as a citizen of the world and could help you with that struggle? Mm. Hit pause and share. Jumping into question number three. Okay, we know that you can't change everything all at once. And when we try, it is just stressful and difficult and ends up probably frustrating us. Um, But here's the tip. Pick one or two things on this list that you see that you think are important in helping you live fully as a citizen of heaven and work on those things. So just pick one or two, not everything, and work on those. Guys, thanks for sharing. Uh, it's sometimes hard to do that and be mm-hmm. vulnerable and transparent, uh, but that's really important. And so thanks for doing that. Yeah. Um, we're praying for you and we just love you so much. Yeah, be, be sure to pray with one another and live as a citizen of heaven and do your best to do that. We love you guys. Have an awesome week.